In the winter of 1855, cloven hoof prints mysteriously appeared in the newly fallen snow in the town of Devon, England. Spanning an area in excess of 40 miles, the impressions were so unnatural that they would be dubbed by locals as the Devil's Footprints, a stranger in their midst. The events that began on February 9th and ended less than 24 hours later would leave many a curious soul wondering who or what had paid them a visit on what should have been a day like any other. Residents had awakened that Thursday morning to a covering of snow. It wasn't long before those who dared brave the elements came to the realization that they had been visited by something decidedly different. Clearly visible on the ground, running up and down the exterior wall of houses and buildings, and even atop the roofs, were sets of hoof prints. Spaced about a foot and a half apart and measuring four inches long, the marks were also found on the surfaces of frozen lakes, bales of hay, and homemade shelters. The mysterious tracks were also found in yards that were enclosed by tall fences that the perpetrator had scaled effortlessly on two feet. Owing to the lack of handprints or tool markings, observers surmised that whatever had made the impressions had ascended and descended the steep barriers while somehow maintaining an upright posture. At roughly the same time, similar prints appeared in the town of and almost 300 miles away in Lincolnshire. Just as in Devon, the responsible party had managed to pass through the communities without raising so much as an eyebrow. How this unidentified entity had traveled such great distances in just over a day's time, entirely on foot, mind you, captured both the attention and imaginations of an enthralled public. That it had done so without anyone being the wiser made the story all the more captivating. A baffling whodunit unfolds. Due to the size and shape of the tracks, it was speculated early on that the source had most likely been a donkey, although finding one capable of walking on two legs was a tall order. At that time, those who had taken it upon themselves to come up with answers were throwing darts in the dark, hoping that something would stick. A few of the more logical thinkers among them proposed that the culprit was actually a balloon that had escaped by accident from a local dockyard. They speculated that the rope that had been used to tether the balloon had come loose from its anchor, causing the buckles that were attached to the end to drag the ground as it took flight. According to proponents of this theory, the prints had not been made by hooves at all, but rather by shackles bouncing along on top of the snow. That the balloon had managed to travel hundreds of miles without the rope getting tangled on obstacles along the way made this scenario unlikely. Still, it was as believable as any of the other possibilities being batted about at the time. Some blamed a sudden influx of rodents for the prints. According to these outside-of-the-box thinkers, the markings were the result of the tiny bodies of mice hopping along on the frozen ground. This theory also failed to gain traction considering that the phenomenon had never occurred on such a grand scale before or after the events of 1855, despite the fact that the rodent population had always been plentiful. A supernatural suspect enters the mix. With the cloven-footed traveler's identity steeped in mystery, many of those who lived in the areas in which the prince appeared refused to leave their homes after dark for fear of what might be waiting for them outside. It wasn't long before rumors began to spread that the tracks had been made by Satan, who had risen from the netherworld in search of souls. Demonic in nature or not, it has never been adequately explained how the being in question had strolled along, one foot in front of the other, in a straight trajectory over any obstacles in its path, without ever zigzagging or wandering off course. Some of the enclosures that the creature was said to have scaled were 14 feet high, and yet, its divided hooves had not missed a beat as it walked straight up the walls and then back down on the other side without using anything to steady itself along the way. Besides being able to traverse any surface with ease, there was also evidence to suggest that the hooved enigma had passed through gutters too small for anyone of size to fit comfortably. Even more astounding was the fact that it had done so without crouching down or crawling as indicated by the markings left behind in the snow. It was also baffling how the same entity had walked across the River X on bisected feet without ever stopping to rest or, more pointedly, without being seen. 
One would think that a solitary figure making its way across a 35-foot-long frozen body of water would have warranted a second look by passersby. But there are no records of anything out of the ordinary having been reported. What you don't know can't hurt you. Eventually, the Fuhrer died down and things went back to normal in the towns that had played host to the unknown invader. When all was said and done, people were left with more questions than answers as to who or what had passed through their peaceful communities on that blustery winter's day. Over a century later, in 2009, the tracks were again spotted in Devon, although on a much smaller scale. Following the same pattern as their predecessors, the prints seemed to defy gravity, appearing on both flat ground and steep inclines without a hint of struggle. Just as in the first incident, no one saw or heard anything unusual prior to the discovery of the prints. To add to the mystery, in an age when CCTV is widely used, no images were captured on camera. Whether the prints were made by a runaway balloon, an army of mice, two-legged donkey, or an agent of the netherworld is up for debate. If the answer is out there, it remains as elusive as the entity that left its mark on the picturesque landscapes of the English countryside on at least two occasions. Then again, perhaps not knowing the source is for the best. After all, it's easier to believe that monsters are merely figments of our imagination when we don't see them in the flesh.